there's really nothing to say about this. And yet here we are. So it's the end of identification and there's no replacement for that. It's uh, non-duality is death, disidentification from the person. It's the end of personality, which is time, which is space. Cannot be known, it's seen that nothing has happened, nothing happens, nothing will ever happen. And it's feels pretty good. So you may not know that this has occurred, although it hasn't occurred because this is always the case, it's, this freedom is here already. But it isn't the transformation that people seek, well mostly, the end of suffering. It doesn't occur until this is seen, it's somehow seen, and it can be physically seen. It's, it's known, it's deeply known, and it's obvious. And there's a joy, a love that belongs to no one, that is boundless, timeless. So there's no location for being, there's just this beingness, which is even to say too much. And this can entirely obliterate the mind, it can obliterate everything, psychologically speaking. And it can be odd to speak after this because speech doesn't seem to migrate, it seemed to migrate beforehand, it seemed to be attached to things, to stories, to, to people, and there can be this words arising from nowhere and just dissolving. And there's a deep absorption, which is love. which is rest, and there's nothing to be said about that. There's a, just a desire to, to fall into that, like falling in love. It's kind of merging with everyone and everything. And that is perfection. So qualities that were kind of concepts or they're seen so the sacred perfection, beauty. They were there all the time. To be seen, to be experienced, they're just experienced by no one. And it takes you out of life in a way. In a way you're deeper in life. There is only life. But the life before was much more the life of mind, it was the life of events, it was the life of relationships relating. And this is an end to all that. But there's still the character that continues in the experiential side of this which may not be relevant, relevant for quite a long time because there is a period of time where 
just to sink into this is, is enough. And if you can do that, that's all you'll want to do is just to be that peace, just to be that rest. Especially during the first few years of this. And there could be a forgetting as well of problems. There can be a forgetting that that other people experience that even because it can remove you very much from suffering and all sense of that. So I was reminded of um, maybe Martin Buber who wrote um, I am now um, ecstatic confessions, an Austrian, Jewish Austrian philosopher who the story you may know that he once got a knock at his door at 6 a.m. from some soldier who wanted to chat with him, saw him as the great master, the great mystic, and Buber was busy, but he let him in and he said, I'll give you half an hour to, to ask me some questions, and this guy did. And you find out the next day that this guy had committed suicide. And he, Buber, thought to himself that he wished he had been more present with this guy, that he had seen this guy more clearly, that he had allowed him to ask questions that were in his heart and on his mind. So he made his philosophy about the everyday. So he changed it. Some say that the soldier died in the war, <laughs> but I'm not sure which is true. So maybe that's why, in a way, I invite questions about anything, really, because this doesn't solve all problems. It doesn't. There is a great falling away. There can be a lot of defences just fall away, and there's this incredible spaciousness because because there's no location here. You know, there's no identity whatsoever, so there's just space. So everything can be accepted, there's a radical acceptance of everything. And even there may be a, a staying with a situation that's not great because it's easy to stay put. So, and the loveness with everything can also be mistaken for love too, in a sense, because it's, it does echo that to a certain degree uh, of falling in love. But it's, there is no falling and there is no object in this, but it's the lack of division because there's no inner and there's no outer, so there's just this and loveness with everything that arises and that can express itself very much with there's a joy in meeting another soul if you like and knowing that there's just a knowing of that lack of separation and seeing beyond the personality there too because there's no one here there's no one there there's no one there's just this and, and there's a kind of celebration in that there's a kind of quiet celebration. And we've always known that we knew it. When we were small, we were very young. And some people remember it to, I don't know, five, six, below the identity itself, the recognition of oneself as separate the illusion of being separate kind of sets in 18 months of being conditioned by our parents, by a name and by a culture. So we lose our ecstasy. And we enter.
into the world of time and form and place. But some part of us maybe senses that there's that sense of something missing and the search begins or the on the external level and nothing fulfills for very long. The mind has seemed to arise out of nothing and into nothing. Thoughts, if they occur, they may not. They certainly, it is likely there'll be much fewer. Those, there's no identity with that, it's just seen. Some thoughts may still have the power to cause suffering, some memories may still have the power, if they have emotion to them, they may still have the power to cause suffering. Depends on what, in the story, what has happened beforehand. So though there's nothing can be done bring this about in a sense because it's always the case and it's so you may find yourself looking for a teacher or a speaker and maybe hoping that something will happen and often there is a kind of falling away in a meeting a kind of resting that can occur And depending on your conditioning, you might be drawn to one teacher or another. Some people are drawn to persona type um, speakers, maybe because there's an idea of purification. The idea of purification would mean that this, the awakened one would be different somehow, maybe revealing less of themselves and much more restricted. And, so we all have these ideas that we project out there, whatever our ideals look like, whatever condition that we carry. And we may just be drawn to someone because we like them. <laughs> but, um, so we get a sense of this sometimes in moments of stillness. Most people experience that from time to time when they're in the flow with something, but it's dependent on an object, whether that object be riding or climbing or running or going on holiday or, or whatever it is. Um, gardening, maybe for some people there's a kind of let go or just out of the blue, there may be a sense of rest that's just momentary when the self isn't there, when the story is gone. But no matter what arises when the shift shift occurs, which doesn't occur, but no matter what arises, suffering which can arise. There's no going back, there's no the location is gone, the identity is gone. and perception is altered, everything is seen more clearly because the focus is not internal, it's, it's here, it's with where you are, so there can be seeing things for the first time because everything is fresh, everything is arising, it's arising for no one, so there's, you may, it can be quite shocking in a gentle way, a gentle shock seeing everything clearly. And no speech comes near this, no relationship, no nothing compares to this. It's beyond all comparison, it's beyond the opposite, it's beyond just beyond.
beyond it's beyond my so I think that's probably <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? How long has it been since you had this subtle switch? The subtle switch. The high. <laughs> um, just over 10 years. Why do you ask? Well, I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I was struggle with the, with working out what's actually changed, you know, and I wonder if, I mean 10 years is a good amount of time, has anything changed in that? You said that you didn't, you were quite happy just sitting in it uh -huh. for a long time, and yeah. then you became sort of normalised with your old self in a sense, in your, in your behaviour all the time. Well, there's two things come to me, like, because it's been quite a long time, it's actually quite, it's more difficult to remember how it was, in a sense. So, because it does become not normal in the sense as, as in, there's not a kind of, oh, here we go, you know, it's, it still has that, the aliveness is still there, and a lot of everything's still there, but, um, what change, I mean, I think it's easier for people who have been in suffering maybe quite a lot to sense difference. So how I was before, sort of suicidally depressed and very, very anxious. Um, so I can remember that viscerally, like how that was, some instances of it. So that fell away, um, fear of intimacy, which I had for a period of time, fell away. Um, yeah, I mean, but the ability to recognise what had happened was almost just not there, and I think it was just because the mind was extraordinarily silent for so long that there really wasn't much, if anything, going on for quite a long time. So now it's like there's some thought and then there's none, but it sort of kind of oscillates. But when there was so it was kind of, there wasn't even a grappling with what's going on and there was also, so it was difficult to kind of name it and, in a sense. Um, but the astonishing thing, I suppose, was just that the perception itself, the, the sense of location going went during the, you know, the the awakening without the love, which I didn't know was that, I had no idea, but of course the absolute absence of the me isn't really a psychiatric thing either, like it's, it didn't make any sense why I was physically gone. I could, I could try to understand those terms like derealization, depersonalization, but I, I couldn't understand why there's this kind of equilibrium but this indifference to subtle indifference to life, like lack of desire, lack of motivation, but a kind of, nothing really shook me, nothing triggered me, nothing excited me or, or disappointed me, it was just this kind of steadiness. Uh, so I didn't think anything of that, just, although somebody I had heard someone mention ego death, and I thought, well, there's something here that's died. I knew something 
had died, and but it seemed so absolute. I didn't realise just like being like air, you know, pure spirit. But I couldn't equate that with because um, anything non-dual. Because I didn't really, I wasn't that familiar with non-duality, and I didn't know that something so radical could occur. Like everything had to be conceptual. Everything had to be symbolic. I didn't understand why there's nothing here, there's no me, there's no self, there's no body, there's no where, <laughs> like, and the same, and, you know, and then the love made me realise something had happened there, because the love was, was definitely spiritual in a way, like, it, it, you know, made me think of biblical references, there's no way that this couldn't be something that related to that somehow, but I didn't know how to express it. And the ordering of, of things be, was quite difficult for me because there was such thick bliss on that week that kind of before the scene of nothing and everything. So let's see, that's, there seemed to be a moment where it was so, that was so, clearly seen and then you know a momentary kind of terror and then the the bliss and the just seeing no objects no no anything and yet all this arising in love I suppose and was and that a particularly turbulent period before it happened in your life or um it it was it was extraordinarily turbulent and, and and then but it was a turbulent and familiar way and then something came in that was a kind of problem that was more concrete, something I couldn't deal with, so it just seemed like it was beyond my resources. Yeah. You know. So it did seem the only possibility was a surrender, but obviously you can't make that happen, so but yeah, it's easy to see a kind of an inevitability to that, but of course it's not. It could end it up just a mass breakdown, you know, that whole thing, breakdown, breakthrough. So, so would you say you're in a state of bliss right now? At the minute? Yeah. Tiddly bit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, so it's just one emotion, it's just bliss? No, no, um, no, I mean, just the normal range of emotion. Yeah, because like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, so it's like just ups and downs, but not, because what you're describing there is just like a state of bliss, which is really good, and then it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of, so right now you feel blissful, you felt that way for 10 years. Well, I think initially, that probably would have only been bliss, you know, mm. so if I was speaking about that then I just said there's only bliss, there's nothing else, you know, what other emotions, yeah. but so, and, and also depending on what there was before, because there was some repression here, so I wasn't in touch with other, I wasn't so aware of other emotions, so for me a lot of things had to kind of be kind of owned or, you know, like so. But there's a lot of periods where it's just um, emotionally neutral, so that, and the emotions that come up, they don't seem to stick around for very long at all. Um, yeah, it's where it was constant before. Like anxiety was twenty four seven. I mean, it pretty much was. I mean, the, I think during sleep as well, so the dreams and you know everything seemed to just be like. Um, reveal that, but yeah, I mean, but bliss can be there with another kind of emotion as well, like it's there anyway, but it intensifies, I, like states of absorption, the absorption is always there, there's always, um, obviously the, the oneness is that, but the states of that can vary, like at times it can feel very, very deep and very, very yeah, because sometimes I feel like I'm kind of in a very mindful state where I'm just very calm and my emotions are kind of dampened. 
Okay. I wouldn't say it's bliss. It's, it's more kind of just like a kind of mindful state, a relaxed state, but not like judgmental. And I'm not always like that. It's not like a consistent thing. Oh, right, okay. Well, it doesn't have to be bliss. Yeah, I mean, but it used to be very, like, have very, very high highs and lows. And, but, like, recently I've been just so kind of stable, but I wouldn't say it's like a good or a bad thing. It's just, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just boring. Like, it's like, um, you know, it's relaxed, like, calm. Okay, so it's kind of oh, like... Yeah, but... Yeah. Do, you, do you ever sort of think, are you kind of aware in that? In um, those... Yeah, I'm just, you know, it's like, just... Um, like a quiet, like observing the things and just taking everything in. So what's the mind like in that as well? Is it just very still and... or? Yeah, no, I just, it's a, it's a difference, because I used to be very, very anxious, like, okay. now I feel like, um, a little bit, but like, you know, I used to just be always like, biting my nails, like as a child, like I would bite all my nails and things like that, I was oh, right. like, you know, but, um, just, that doesn't, like, things don't bother me as much. Well. So is this kind of coming and going then, like? No, it's just like, you know, sometimes I'm like that, or if like, I'm stressed, it's easier to manage and things like that. But okay. I didn't say I'm like, um, it's bliss, you know? Like, bliss is a very, is an intense emotion. Oh, I wouldn't get hung up on that, I really it's wouldn't. Good. You know, could be awakening happening there, like, yeah. the falling away, it just could... Because it is just a deep yeah. relaxation, it is mindful, it's natural mindfulness, I mean, it... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know the difference, so. But it, it, do you ever? I mean, is, is there a sense of kind of me there or a person there? Like yeah, it, it, it's like definitely. I'm not, it's not like a non. I don't think it was like an awakening or anything. I don't know okay. how to describe it, but I'm just. I was quite curious because there was a change, and um, so. But I, I, I wouldn't really describe it as that. Like, okay. It's, it's just. But just peace, kind of peace, or yeah, like this, like a kind of calmness, or like like a dampening of, of, of I guess so. Like, like sometimes, like a, I'm just kind of like doing things, and I'm not really doesn't like. There's no emotion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds kind of like this. But it doesn't like that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like something is falling away, or. You know, because it is just that relaxation, and I guess you just are where you are when you're in experiencing that. Yeah, I mean, it's an improvement, like, yeah. Because that's it, I mean, you don't need to distract yourself when there's that in that state of mind. I mean, you just, you're in what you're doing, aren't you? You're just with what's there. Sounds good. Hi. Um, I guess the main reason why I came was because I've, I've started taking my meditation recently and um, non-duality is like kind of being incorporated within the program that I've, I've taken up as a trial and it, yeah, it pretty much repeats a lot of what you, you said earlier about, you know, the idea that there's no self and to not identify with thoughts and feelings to see everything in the same space, the physical world and, and uh, yourself, what your thoughts and minds are, thoughts and the feelings are, but, but um, I was wondering if, would you still identify with like positive, happy thoughts? Because if you're, I'm thinking like, if you're not identifying with negative thoughts anymore, logically, what, why would you are we, are we identifying with happy thoughts as well, if there's no self? It's, Does that make sense? It's slightly different than that, it's, it's just the, the whole falling away of identity per se, like okay. so it's just none of that's owned, negative or positive, it's just not, it's just arising naturally and it's it's not who you are, so okay. 
it's not like I mean, it's not like you ignore ignore, ignore thinking, you know. Yeah. Because. Because when you identify with a happy thought or emotion, isn't that the self returning? No, That's identify well, ad yeah, identifying with it, but it's just you're not getting, you're not getting identity from it. So like, if a thought, okay, so thoughts and emotions are information. If the thoughts are informed by emotion, then that's that's information, right? That's okay. telling you something about life. So the character continues. So okay. it's not like if you're practicing something like meditation, if it's yeah. yeah, it's it's fine to go along with that and just be mindful and try to be present and mm. to be aware of all that without identifying. But sometimes it's probably quite good to take what you're thinking and feeling seriously, so you can look at what's going on in your life as well, because mm. if you're ignoring your psychology, yeah. you might get into a lot of trouble, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I ignore negative thoughts, but I get a lot of intrusive thoughts, and okay. I, I, yeah, sometimes when they're so, like, visceral and profound, it's, the, it's hard to lose identity to them, I guess that's this process that I'm trying to embark on. Yeah, well, intrusive thoughts by their very nature, it's, they're just really painful, aren't they, and yeah. traumatic, and they're kind of unshakable. But yeah, because I've just yeah. been trying to see it as like just an appearance in consciousness, as, yeah. as everything else is, as is like things we see, hear, touch, and seeing it in the same space. And I've tried to create that shift recently. It hasn't become a permanent one, but the short time that I've been practicing it has helped somewhat. Yeah, it can't there's nothing that can bring about the shift. Yeah. But that will okay, will ease things up. I mean there's there's definite changes in the brain which you've yeah. got to be aware of. Like so when you when you do do those practices. But and yeah, no it's 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 good. I mean it's good stuff, it's just don't ignore it. Yeah, don't ignore sure. everything for all the time. But so was your time. change gradual or sudden? It was sudden. Sudden. And is there anything you could advise upon like working towards? Well, well there isn't because it's seen because when it's seen that there's no one here, it's realised it's not in there's there's no one who okay. can have that power. Like there's you okay. know, it's but at the same time you can't help going towards, you know, what you think might help. And, and there are certain situations, obviously, are going to give rise to more peace and stuff. So maybe doing that practice for you or sitting in nature or, sure. or, or whatever. I mean, it is just going to improve the quality of your mind and therefore sure. your life. But, okay. but it's just, yeah, it, it can't be. What would you say the uh, trigger was for the change, the rapid change? We can't. I mean, it's 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 commonly spoken of grace, but you know, grace is there. There doesn't have to be a trigger. You know, it's just it happens or it doesn't happen. You know, it's and it doesn't have to. I mean, some stories in, in the story of time, which has got nothing to do with this, it can seem very much like a story of grief or a story of pain can make this happen. But it's seen again that. There's nothing happening, nothing. You know, you're not that. You're not that thought stream. You're not that time. You so you're not the time bound entity. So there's nothing that can bring this about. It's and it's here all the time. Um. So, but yeah, I mean, in period, you know, through studies, it <laughs> like suffering is a common story for sure. It is. In, people, you know, before and after stories and but sometimes that happens out of the blue. So there's nothing you can't pin this down, you really can't it and it, you know but sometimes it does seem gradual, you know, maybe what you're describing, like there can be just this falling away where it's thought maybe something's happened or not and it can't really pinpoint when, you know, when that was gone. Not because nothing happens, right? But it, there is a 
for some people it's just sort of slowly kind of emerges that way so I don't know whether that's more common or not um, when you say there are situations that are more uh, conducive to peace is that because of the individual psychology well more like studies and stuff like sitting in nature people there tends to be more of a let go I mean that's quite well known is that whatever makes you more relaxed that like a, a glass of wine everybody knows you know cream cake <laughs> no whatever it is for you a cup of coffee you know so it's more physical instincts that like... or, or just just being in an environment that feels safe or has nice associations or in a room that gives you like here there's no agenda and, you know there's permission to just be in a way like or orgasm, le petit more, like the small death, as the, there's often a falling away in that as well. Um, but and then some people feel safe and there's differences in what people consider safe, so is that due to individual psychology? Well, I think it's quite common in nature, isn't it? Like, um, but I know other people would feel unsafe here. <laughs> yeah, <a little> bit. <laughs> yeah, like, especially, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. But, but you often hear it spoken of, don't you, that people in a meeting that their sense of self kind of drops away during it and then... After yeah, I happens. understand. I understand that, but I'm just wondering if there's, also, if there's something to do with the... If there's still an individual element that remains after the identity has fallen away. Yeah. Of the sense of identity has fallen away. There's still some identity that's just. Identity. Well, yeah, it can just seem to be an abeyance in certain situations, like, and that openness that occurs when you're in a new landscape that's just kind of awe inspiring, you know, or I don't know, whatever it is for you can suddenly just take you out of time and out of the mind. And, but it doesn't reconfigure, you know, it doesn't, the sense of location is still there, or, you know. It's just sort of temporary, not quite a glimpse, um, but yeah, it sort of echoes the internal state of this, I suppose. Um, yeah, I imagine the, the mind is quiet and the body relaxes and there's a sense of peace. Yeah, um, some people don't get any of that, of course. <laughs> and then afterwards, I think I've spoken this before, like, there's still that, there are still situations where the absorption can be deeper and maybe in nature you'll feel it even, you know, mm. um, maybe even being in a meeting, in a, you know, so wherever there's no agenda, it's, it's like it, it's like this likes novelty and it likes um, no agenda, you know. Mm. So it's natural that, I suppose, these methods or meditation, everything's kind of trying to recreate those conditions in a way. Because I suppose in all the spiritual books, it's like, you know, what happens if you turn left when you're walking instead of right, you know, it can take you on yourself just being in a different environment or, you know, I suppose falling in love as well, people can experience more silence maybe and more connection but it's um, all temporary how did you know that it was a permanent change after it happened and that it wasn't just a uh, just yeah temporary i suppose it just went the ball, the ball, the ball. i don't know it was very different i had a glimpse of like god quite a few years before that and it was very different. I mean, the quality when it fell away here it was just very different. Like, it couldn't, because there was no, you know, there's absolutely, you know, I don't know whether there was any sense of location, in which case was it a privilege. I don't know, but here, like, it just couldn't be imagined what could possibly come back in a way, because there's no one to come, for it to come back to. You know, and there never was. It just seemed so. And anyway, the bliss was so deep. I didn't care, and that was 
I don't know. I mean, some people do get that, that fear maybe maybe it will come back or or, or maybe they'll think, oh my God, like when they, if they get an attack of fear or something bad happens, you know, but even then, you know, the identity is gone and location is gone and there's still that sense of intimacy even with fear. I mean, I can't speak for like terror and so I have no idea what, you know, um, that would be like, but... Glimpses. I mean, glimpses can last apparently several several months. You know, usually split second. But so. so. Quick question on the video. Uh -huh. um, how do you decide to edit and upload the videos to YouTube? How do I decide? Yeah, because like sometimes not all of it will make it there. Like the last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can, do you want me to rectify that? I'll put it up this evening. There you go. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm sure it was just a coincidence, but as soon as, soon as I started talking, it just the video ended. Like, <laughs> right. Only the first half of the meeting was there. All right, okay, I'll, I'll rectify that. I was going to do that earlier. I forgot, so I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. so how do I decide? Well, it depends, doesn't it? Because it could be a really shit meeting, couldn't it? Um, it depends, but most of the mine go up, I think. I think they've all gone up so far, so, yeah, but who, who decides? Well, I decide, don't I? No, there is no I. <laughs> There's a decision that's apparently being made, so, yeah, I mean, it's not, not like any of that goes away, so, yeah, sorry to disappoint <laughs> Interesting question, though. <laughs> mm. And do you avoid or or spend more time in in spaces that feel more peaceful? Do you, is there a decision making process like that? No, not really. I mean, just if I find myself, sometimes I become aware of it. Like if I'm stuck in a queue in the supermarket or something, that I'm very absorbed. You know, and it's nice to be kind of how nice it is to be in a queue in the supermarket. <laughs> it's kind of like. Or, but no, I mean, I like walking, I like sitting in all nature anyway, but so I do try to kind of do that occasionally just to, you know, because it is sweet, you know, um, but, you know, I, I also think, also, I find it quite deep when I'm one-to-one -one with somebody, like with a friend or something, it's very, very sweet, I think, because that is, I mean, it is a massive difference because I was so self-absorbed before, just be, you know, lost in my own stuff. It was very hard to kind of be with who I was with. Um, I'm not sure if it was always like that, but it certainly was for a bit of the time. But, like, even spending half an hour in nature, the, the effects on your health, like, you know, to do that daily are massive. Like, so, I mean... We must sort of need it on some level, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I find myself found myself being really triggered this week. Okay. And, uh, it's, a, it's a silly thing. It's not the thing that, that matters. And I'm just wondering. It's kind of akin. Felt this is like akin to like a someone disses your religion. You just get this sort of rage, you know. Uh -huh. Not that I'm particularly religious, but that's kind of how I analogise with it. And I'm just sort of wondering. I kind of want to bring it up. I don't know why, how you could possibly deal with that question, but it's sort of like, is there some some essence of being triggered, which is is about the relationship of the soul and this this sort of message? Like, is that is that a kind of a real flaw in our psyche that needs to, that's looking for an answer or something. I don't know, the, the trigger, so the trigger created, what was it, rage or? It was just a real kind of toxic anger, it didn't okay. come, come out really, it was just very mental and, uh, you know. Well, because, I mean, anything that's coming from a trauma, 
which you, you mentioned a trigger, so I automatically think of that, so I don't know what that applies to or not, but I mean, that's stored in the body, isn't it? So in, it doesn't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily be touched by awakening anyway, so mm -hmm. those triggers are very powerful and, the, you know, that, that early stuff can stay there and, you know, an emotional flashback can still occur if that's, if that's what you've had before, so if it's intense fear, you know, there may be a sense of helplessness arising or even in extremes it could be suicidal, you know, potentially awake or not, you know, if it's coming from... It really, it's just injustice, I think that's really the... Sense of injustice? It's so really unfair. Okay, well it's, that's deep-rooted anyway. And, right, was it personally unfair then? No, it's, it's the stupid stuff that's going on in social media. Really silly stuff, but somehow, sometimes, I just it just really pisses me off. Was it kind of scapegoating stuff, or yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, and just I don't know. It's just this battle between these two sides, really. And I'm okay. it's got nothing to do with non-duality, but I feel like associated with one side. Okay. But completely passively. So when the insults fly from one direction, it's sort of like well. That's the me, that's me, you know? And somehow, non, from a non jill perspective, there's no reason why I should believe that's real. But there's part of me that still reacts to it as if it is very real. You know? Well, it's a real reaction, isn't it? And, and also, I mean, you can still feel passionate about something, it doesn't negate that. And if you sense an unfairness there, I mean, you know, the, you know people can have very, you know, still be political or whatever they matters to them, it doesn't necessarily, not everything falls away, it's, you know, some certain things have energy to them and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, it's good, you're, you're alive, you've got a sense of fairness there by the sound of it, so what's wrong with that? And if you go into social media, you're going to get some reaction because it, it is like that, isn't it? It's quite toxic and... All I do is receive. I don't have a, a way of releasing it. I don't think it would be good to release it, in essence, um, in the way that I receive it, which would be you know, through social media. Oh, to express it somehow? To, so you're just left with that? I just sponge it up and I'm just sort of been angry for quite a long time and then I forget about it. But then I, yeah, I mean, it's not a non-duality, I mean, thank you for talking about it, but I suppose you've answered it in that that can still happen afterwards, in, in a sense. Or would you say that the longevity of it is is not typically what you would experience? Because it doesn't seem in any way constructive or positive, it's just... I, to be honest, it can, it can happen any which way. I mean, I don't think, you know... You can't pin this stuff down, and if it's a traumatic reaction, it's going to be above and beyond normal reaction anyway. Like say something's a emotional flashback, and I mean you've got the most extreme example was Suzanne Segal, you know that book Collision with the Infinite, who was in a state of terror, but the me had just unequivocally gone. You know, God knows what that was about. You know, there's so many people had opinions about it, very fixed opinions, but so. Yeah, if it's an emotional flashback, it could last a long time. There's no reason why it couldn't. Normal emotions, from you know what I've heard and whatever what I've experienced here, just normal kind of range of emotions tend to be very fleeting. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with whatever appears mm -hmm. before or after. It's like um, it really depends how this affects you. The transfer, the, the personality transformation is, I guess, is going to be unique and, and some people would say that's to do with the depth of awakening, but even that can shift, you know, the, over time it can be deeper for one month and not, you know, like it... Well, my experience seems to mirror very much this young man here, which is, life got a lot simpler a while ago. Okay. But I wouldn't say if I'm, there's still a me here who's attached and being triggered and things like that. Um, and I've had glimpses of what it sounds like you're describing. Uh -huh. 
But um, my normal is very, uh, it seems very normal. <laughs> but it's not as horrible, you know, I don't have very high or very low experiences really. So everything's kind of evened out a bit, there's more equilibrium and... You could definitely compare to when I was pre, you know, Tony Parsons and Coke sort of era, yeah. Okay. A lot seemed to fall away then, and I had these quite long experiences of, of different things, joy, bliss, uh, complete confusion. Uh, right, okay. But then, yeah, it just, it just uh, yeah, I'm just much happier in my own skin, but I, I wouldn't, don't really feel like I'm whatever. <laughs> there, <Yeah. laughs> you know, like big bang. I mean, it doesn't have to be. You mean, but you're still seeking, or or is you is that sort of subdued as well? Then I'm seeking start more material things these days. Okay. Whereas there was a long period where I was really seeking this message as much as possible, and that that died down a lot. But sometimes I do get this sort of almost a hunger pang for it, and then, you know, I look up people like yourself who are, who are speaking and, you know, want the answer. Alright, oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Knowing full well, from the mental perspective, that there isn't a singular sentence or whatever that, that could be said. Or but you say there's a me still there, like how can you, can you describe that then? Like My me? Your um, me. Well this is partly my sort of first question was, well how do you really know? That's the, um, and I remember I did have this, this very strong glimpse once where everything kind of parted and it was almost like a, I was like a kaleidoscope, it was sort of like a spinning energy which was just the very pure essence of something. Okay. And that I had complete. I wasn't. I didn't feel kind of contracted in the body. I felt everything at the same time, kind of thing. And that was that was cool. Um, yeah. So I kind of imagined it would be more like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, but it, it. You know, that's the big bang moments, and then you know. You know. The, Blesses there, the lack of location, or whatever it is, you know, it's, but it's, you know, it could be really intense in the seeing as well, like if it's a dramatic experience like that. Yeah. But it, the lived experience of it is, I couldn't say ordinary, like, because it's far from that, but it's not like the big bang moments either, like it's, life is the same, isn't it? But it's just intensified, and there's no one here, and there's no one there, like it's, you know, and it can be more subtle, like, it, 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 it really can, like, it, a lot of people experience it as just very, very ordinary, like, and that's what, it's, I mean, what you're describing, it sounds... Well, there, there's an argument for saying we're already there, that we're all already there. Yeah, sure. But then there was definitely a rough period before, so, I don't know, I'm still left, I suppose, with the question, am I... Am I completely baked? And yeah, okay. And I think if the question is there, it implies not completely Not necessarily. Yeah. It could just be the question is there, and it might be difficult to answer again because, you know, maybe it's not so dramatic or whatever. Like, it, it can be. Some people find it really tricky to own this or to, like, sometimes it, I think the easy way to, is to talk about it, put it in your words, and you kind of somehow can really sink in and the question can drop away in that somehow. Yeah, okay. Thank you. At one point you obviously felt the urge to start talking about it publicly. Uh-huh. Does that, does that mean anything? Or is it just you felt that inclination at a certain point? Because I, I wouldn't, you know, kind of doing it in your arena. Right. But I'd never feel like I should I mean, it sounds terrifying, but to arrange a meeting where I sit down and start talking about non-duality, I mean, I suppose that isn't an indicator either, really, is it? No, it's not. I mean, I mean, I wanted to talk about it 
I think because I had nothing really to say and I didn't see what I could say that would be any different and I had this sort of embarrassment around repeating that this is it, this, you know, like I just didn't want to be one of those people because it, <laughs> but because I had sort of a Kundalini experience where I realised a lot of things have been repressed and stuff, it kind of gave me an angle on it so I sort of thought well I was ignoring my own psychology, I wasn't really seeing, you know, certain areas of my life that really needed to be addressed. I just, I was just ignoring it and going along. I, so that was a wake up call for me. It's like, and, and when I had that, it was like, for fuck's sake, the only reason I'm not talking about this is, you know, there's just like a, a fear of it or what, like there was just this courage then, um, mm. I think from getting in touch with more of myself, like the personality self, the, the anger, the sadness, the whole shebang. So, it was kind of like an embodiment kind of, even though there's no location here still like it, but it was sort of like, you know, other bits of the psyche waking up in a sense, you know. So there was an impetus to, to do it. Um, as part of like self-expression, if nothing else, but like, I mean, actually unknown as well, I don't know, but it did arise and it rose very, very strongly when it did. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a good thing to do as well because you learn what you think and otherwise you kind of don't and then you're just left with somebody else's words or something and then you feel like you're just imitating someone else's and that if you've got a question am I awake am I not and you're imitating someone else well you'll be thinking well maybe I'm not you know so you know you don't know how it is and you can be so empty there's no way you could even formulate that or like you know so it's just, I mean, everybody else is talking about it a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's quite, it's flooded now, isn't it? A lot of people. I can't, for some reason I can't listen to a lot of people. Uh, I feel like it's not. I remember, well, I remember in, is it the Cheshire Cheese? Oh, yeah. There was, see, that's in that period, 2012, 2013, has been incredibly rich. Well, it was. And it doesn't feel like that now, but maybe that's just what I'm willing to hear and seek out. But um, that's that seemed to be uh, really a time. It was still very social then, wasn't it? There was big gatherings. I mean, the Cheshire Cheese. I mean, it was a guaranteed social proper, wasn't it? It was good fun, and it's like the rooms were just full, weren't they? No matter who was speaking, it. So yeah, it has kind of. Spread thin as it now, and it's online. And yeah. it seems that way to me, but yeah. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Is one of the uh, kind of consequences uh, of this awakening? Do you have like a really strong filter to like all thoughts and emotions? Because I mean, I guess to uh, to not identify with anything again is just like is impossible, but. Do you just like to take everything like in your own stride, like you're not affected by by very much at all? I'm not affected in the same way. Certain things affect me more than others. Yeah. Um, so, some things affect me very much. I mean, it depends what, what it is. It's, I mean, it's just normal. You know, the personality goes on and normal life is being, being lived. So yeah. thinking about something, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to deal with a situation or you know, it's it's no different in a sense. It just doesn't have that doesn't have that same kind of repetitive. You're not caught in a loop of like I don't know, you know, repetitive thinking about you're just stuff. Present in your experience. There's more of that, and there's also yeah, it's, you know, there's more space to kind of see that as well. So yeah. you don't get caught up in things the same. Sure. Unless it's trauma, in which case it's a traumatic response. Yeah. By its very nature, you, you would be caught up in that. Um, I think I can't speak for everyone. I can't speak for everyone in any of this. Like it's it's different in all cases. But yeah, it's not. You know, you've still got. You know, if anyone thinks they don't have any problems if. You know, if you're in a relationship, or you you know, <laughs> you know, you're gonna have problems. You know, yeah. if you're have close relationships with people, there are always problems that will arise and stuff has to be dealt with. You know, you can't 
if you avoid life, then you may not have any forever, you know, just sit on the bench. Uh, which, okay. But I don't know if that answers your question. No, yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs>